All right, let's talk about how to upgrade a V8 instance of Redash that's been created from one of our AWS AMIs or through our DigitalOcean droplet and upgrade it to V10. This is going to assume you've already created an instance, but to cover that very briefly, if you're on AWS, you can use these quick links in our documentation to jump to the launcher that allows you to create an instance. I would recommend if you're running V10, which is the latest version, that you should use a t2.medium size, and that in addition to that, you'll need to configure a security group that allows access not only for SSH traffic on port 22, but also HTTP and HTTPS traffic. Uh, that way you can access the instance from your front end. This doesn't need to be open to every IP address. That's only if you want it to be public on the internet. Uh, you probably know if there's a specific security group that it needs to be part of for internal access in your org. Alternatively, if you want to launch the DigitalOcean droplet, it's a bit easier actually. You can click this link to the Redash on Marketplace application. You'd click this button to create a Redash droplet, and then you would go through basically the same steps as you would inside of EC2. Importantly, you'll need to set up SSH access keys for either DigitalOcean or for EC2. That way you can SSH into the box. Um, there are different instructions depending on the provider that you use, so I'm not going to go into that here. But once you have a functional instance, uh, in EC2 you should have an instance panel that looks like this, where you can find your public IP address. This is for an EC2 instance. Or in DigitalOcean, which I'm going to use for uh, this example here, you should have a... Uh, a full dashboard that's available. And this is going to show the IPv4 address and if you enabled it, IPv6. So uh, in this case, if I uh, just visit this URL um, for this IP address, I have an instance of v8 redash that's running here. I'll just create an account so we can make sure that it works. And when we log in, this is a functional version of V8 Redash. And you can see the version when I click on my profile. So the next step is we're going to go into our terminal and we'll SSH into the box and upgrade it. Inside the terminal, you will need to make sure that you've got your SSH key agent running in such a way that you can access the server that you uh, created. I'm going to go into my DigitalOcean one here. So I can do SSH-I. I've got my IDRSA file here. Uh, the root user is going to be root, and there's the IP address. There, I now have access to the droplet uh, over SSH. All of the Redash files, regardless of whether you're on an AMI, a DigitalOcean droplet, in GCP, etc., those are going to be contained inside the opt slash Redash folder. And if I ls here, you can see we have a Docker Compose file, an env file, and then Postgres data. All of the changes we need to make are going to be inside docker-compose.yaml. So we'll sudo v, uh, sudo vi, excuse me, docker-compose.yaml to open the file. Now, a few things to notice here. Um, the version 2 is just the version of the document. This x redash service is a definition that is shared across all of the non-standard containers. So uh, anything that we change in this definition of a Redash service will apply to any service that's defined to use it. So we can see the server service uses this, the scheduler, the scheduled worker, the ad hoc worker, and then Redis, Postgres, and Nginx do not use it because those are based off of different images. So we only need to make a change to the image right here on line three in order for this to apply to every service in the Docker Compose orchestration. So how do we get a Redash version 10 tag? We can do this by going back to the browser. And if you just visit the get redash slash redash repository, where open source redash is hosted, you can look under releases, and then version 10 is the latest release. At the top of the release notes, we'll always include what the tag is. So let's jump back over into VI. And here, we can just delete to the end of the line and paste in the new tag. Now, there are some special instructions that come for the version 10 upgrade if you're coming from V8, which we are in this example. The first one is that under services, scheduler environment, uh, we can omit the queues and worker count environment variables, and we can completely eliminate the environment definition if we haven't defined anything else there. The only time where you'd have something else in your environment is if you've manually added it previously. On our default AMIs, you'll see that there's nothing else inside the environment. So here we are inside the, uh, the scheduler. It has an environment, queues, and worker count. So what we need to do is to delete this line and the two lines following. So we'll do that there. Here we are in scheduled worker. We can repeat that operation. 
and then here under ad hoc worker we can repeat that operation so that was the first step and then it said also under services add a new service for general rq jobs so that means that down here after the nginx service we're going to define a new one and i'm going to put this two lines in and paste it and then we need to indent this properly because it's yaml so we'll add two spaces there and then we can actually just repeat that operation so now we have followed the instructions as indicated here. We've added a new worker. We've gotten rid of the old environment information. So we need to save this file. Uh, in VI, you can do that with escape, WQ, after the colon. And then we need to follow these instructions. We need to run Docker Compose up, force recreate build. Since we're using an escalated privilege environment, we need to prepend sudo onto the front of this. So it needs to be sudo docker compose up, force recreate build. This is going to pull the new image down from Docker Hub. This can take about a minute. Excellent, looks like all the services worked. Now that automatically restarts all the services when we complete that operation. So I've just uh, tapped Control C in order to stop it because we have one more command that we need to run. You'll see that it shuts down all the containers. I'm going to um, tab over to my browser and see there's one more command we need to run, which is docker compose run rm server manage db upgrade. Uh, the purpose of this is to run any database migrations that are necessary from one version to the next. This is a common part of all upgrade steps, whether you're going from V8 to V10 or V8 to V9 or V7 to V8. Um, you always want to make sure that you run your database migrations before you try and run the app. It won't load otherwise. So again, we'll prepend with sudo. So sudo docker compose run arm server manage db upgrade. This is very quick. Uh, migrations usually don't take much time at all. Now that that's done, we need to start up our containers again. So we can do this with sudo docker compose up, and then dash D means it will run in the background. You could also do this by just restarting the virtual host. Um, if you do that, the way that our AMI and Droplet are configured, anytime the server reboots, it'll automatically restart Docker and Docker compose. So now that that's run, we should be able to return to the browser and just load this page. It might take a few seconds because even after the containers have completely started, the server running inside the container might take a few seconds to start. So we can give this a moment and hopefully the login page will load. And there it is. So now we can log in with the username and password I just created moments before. And when the page loads, we're now running version 10, which has the vertical nav bar instead of the horizontal. And you can see version 10 down here on the lower left. Thank you very much for watching.